<laughs> Look who it is. It's it's Duncan Kane. I boys and girls, are you fucking kidding me right now? Oh my you know, god. Uh, uh as as the kids say nowadays, I'm dead. Oh my god. Look at this. Okay. Everybody come the fuck down and let's get our composure just for a minute because, boys and girls, this is a Monday. We hate Mondays. Uh, as uh, the Iron Sheet says, fuck the Mondays. Delete. Uh, we hate the Mondays, but we like to talk to the talent. But we're putting a spin on it this week, my friends. This is STP Fan Week. And look who we have to start off Fan Week. Is one, holy fuck, uh, is one Greg Jones Isaacson. Uh, thank you so much. And I mean so much for joining the show and your beautiful, uh, your, that, that fucking sign, dude, that, it just made me pop as soon as I seen it. I was a one man party because I was at work. I requested the pick because I heard the buzz of some marred up uh, property from one ref queue. And that is the result. Uh, Mr. Greg Jones Isaacson, thank you so much for joining our show, the fan show, and speaking to us and just having some fun. Well, to say I'm honored is really an understatement, Don. You do so much for everybody around you, and it's just really nice to be able to talk some wrestling with somebody who can appreciate it and not someone who I'm shoving it down their throat, you know? <laughs> uh, I've, I've been there, my man. I think we all have as wrestling yes. fans, and we talk about that, trying to find the friend. That you can hang out with and speak right. <laughs> Woo, that shit makes me pop. Oh my god. Thought... The story behind the story behind that, boys and girls. If you haven't seen it on my old face page, uh, we're gonna get into the story of said uh, big DK face, uh, marred up, private property, uh, you know, vandalized, if you will. <sighs> the love, the love, boys and girls. You know. We talk about how SCP is not my show. It's for the fans. And this is why, and I know I haven't done it yet, but I was doing previously a fan roundtable. It's kind of fizzled uh, for whatever reason here or there. And I know coming back, bringing some STPs in, I wanted to set some time aside for the, for the fans specifically because we don't do roundtables. And I really thought this was going to be a great uh, starting point because, A, we've never met. B, we have a, we have a, uh, a little, a little click, if you I will, <laughs> uh, a, a little connection <laughs> uh, on the old will. face page. Yes. Uh, and, and I mean, I do use the face page mostly. That's why I kind of tend to say face page more than I do the Twitter or Insta or Pornhub and such. Uh, but that my Facebook, that's my, the face page. That's what I kind of use most. Uh, and we have kind of sparked a relationship outside of the ring on the medias. And, uh, it's been fantastic getting, to, <laughs> getting to know you on the media. Uh, but Mr. Uh, Isaacson, I cannot wait until we actually get to meet in person. I know you're, we're going to start right here. I'm in CT and Mr. Uh, Isaacson, he's up in Rhode Island. If I'm not mistaken, is that correct, sir? A little bit further north. I'm actually in Raina, Mass. Oh, shit. Uh, well, some travels to Mass can get quite lengthy from from me to up any in the far parts of Mass. That could take like three some odd hours for me. So uh, I apologize for not going up to some of those fun ass shows that I see you at. Uh, so uh, my my apologies first off uh, to anyone who is watching this that attends said shows that Mr. Isaacson attends. Uh, I, I want to get up there on the reg, but they're just too damn far. For, they're just too damn far for me. And I think that's what's going on on the flip side with Mr. Isaacson in my area. But one of these days, we'll connect. We'll have some fun. Uh, so please. Mr. Isaacson, talk to us about. Uh, let's. You know what? Start behind. Start behind you, my man. Uh, I don't know what's going on there, but please let us know what's. <laughs> that's a magnificent <laughs> background. Uh, please well, fill us in. I just spent a little time to showcase a few of my favies, as we call them. But uh, 
yeah, my bedroom is not even recognizable as my bedroom anymore because as you can see, it's covered in my work. And I kind of didn't realize how every show, I come home, I unload my bag, I'm tired as the wrestlers are, wake up the next day and you address it. But you don't realize, at least I don't, how much flipping signs I actually have at the end of the day. And thank God I have a little bit of space here and a little is stressing it. But <laughs> I, it's now become kind of a museum <laughs> of, of signs that I just rifle through. And it's funny because there's no designated promotion that, okay, this is this bag, that bag. It's like every new, every show, you got somebody from another promotion popping up, which is beautiful. I love seeing you know the cross promotion and everything and the variety. That's what makes it. That's what sells it. But yeah, it's, <laughs> here it is. This is what you see. And, you know, some people talk about it. You might see a sign here or there. But I've held on to every one that I can that people have not torn up or, you know, done other things too. But even some of the ones I did get torn up, I saved just for sentimental reasons, you know? I actually have a couple of Joey G's uh, signs over there uh, that are ripped right. up. Yeah, I got some stuff. <laughs> Uh, over set aside that I, that I'm going to be mending and putting back together and laughing and pointing and saying, ha, fuckers, it relives. It lives again. Uh, like, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, there was a manila envelope and it had uh, Chris Mojo's, uh, I'm going to say Mojo's or something. Somebody called him Moho last week, and I thought it was absolutely hysterical. And I can't wait to literally call him Chris Moho. <laughs> Woo, Moho. It takes uh, one little thing, one tiny little thing, <laughs> and you can just sell it beyond belief. Moho, I think it was. That's even funny. I think it was Muhu, not Moho. See, I'm getting, I only got one brain cell, so I Moohoo. lose track of stuff. Uh, Muhu, I think it was Muhu. I have to I have to revert back and and, and uh, definitely pick that out. Uh, but the point being is there was a manila, manila envelope given to one CPA that had Chris Mojo's taxes in it. Oh, what? CPA, one of my favorites. I, I, yeah, CPA is a favorite of mine. Well, Chris Mojo was not happy with that. And I don't even know if that's how you pronounce his last name because I don't give a shit. I just know it's MCM. Other than that, I don't even really care because he pisses me off every time. Uh, but – I, I got that manila envelope. I'm bringing it back. And I, and not only that, I think I might do it sooner than next tax season. Okay. And uh, okay. we'll figure a little something out to really give Mr. Chris Mojo, MCM himself, the business, if you will. Well, we'll kind of dig, dig in a little bit. But those are the things that I've saved. I don't have many of them, but they are. Uh, one is uh, from Terry Duffy Jr. and uh, and two – are from Joey G. I like to call him Jackie G. <laughs> Jackie G! Uh, but, you know, we just have a lot of fun at the shows. And if Ooh. I see some stuff that I can maybe mend for the future and really give it to the guys, I'm going to do such. And they're Joey G's uh, ripped up signs, and I love me some Joey G. So why not make them have a second life, you know, my friend? Yeah, I, I get it. I, I like to do kind of a one-up sometimes. Like we had a – it was a – an NRG show, the New England Ring Gladiators, and mm -hmm. Kylon, your friend Kylon. I think you can. Oh, I, love you Kylon. I love me some Kylon. I love me some Kylon. Look at that beautiful yeah. face. I mean, come on. So me and Kylon, we didn't used to be tight, as a lot of wrestlers and I didn't used to be until you know you get a good sign. And I think it was him. It was first time I saw Kylon. It was at Top Rope, and I made a. It was like a Chris Tucker from The Fifth Element. You know, Rudy Rod. Hey, Tucker, my man. <laughs> And I, I made this, this one that said Kylan King, and he ripped that up real quick. So I, said, <laughs> hey, I, I gotta, I gotta get him back. So I, I came, I come prepared. When something happens like that, I don't mess around, and I remember that. And I say, okay, okay how do we one, one up that? So I brought to an NRG show a giant Kylan sucks kind uh, sign. I also had a Kylan's a cuck sign that I think I did first. He ripped that up. And then I had a bunch of eight and a half by 11s that I printed off that just said Kylon sucks. So he ripped up the Kylon cuck sign. Then bam, I hit him with the giant Kylon sucks sign. And then the whole room erupted with mini Kylon sucks signs. So <laughs> moments like that, for me, it's like, you think I'm messing around, but I take this very, very seriously. And it, 
and it takes on a life of its own um, with us, the fans, the people that are attending. And not only that, when the talent returns from going from venue to venue, promotion pro- to promotion, week in, weekend in and out, and sometimes we may not see a Kylon King for another month and a half, two months, three months. But when they return, when the talents return, they remember that son of a bitch. When I was at NRG, they remember those things. But you know it what? It blows my mind. It really does. Their memories that they take away from the events like we do as fans, mm-hmm. first off, because we talk about that a lot on the show. Not only is it the memories, but you know, man, they're popping inside. They're having a grand old they time are. with that. They you know are. what I'm saying? Completely. And sometimes even in, for me, the harder I go, the the edgier I get is the shit that they love the most. <laughs> and I I can't explain it. Where like, do, do you know uh he he's he's moved down to Florida, but his name's Cold Steel Chuck O'Neill. You ever hear of him? No wonder why he disappeared. Thank you for telling me. I've been wondering what the hell happened to him. Well, good old Chucky and me, we go way back, and I just I took a liking to him, and I I made a. This is actually one of my first ones here. Just a typical heel, Chuck O'Neill. You just got him with a big old heel. So, simple to the point, rhyming. Come on, you can't beat it. Uh, but it, it, it was every show. Every show I bring something new. And then finally, um, he fought Big Bake and Brad Hollister. And I caught them right. They were the last uh, the main event. And I caught them outside. I didn't want to be rude, but I just said, I had to interrupt and say, hey, guys, you did a great job. You know, if you ever need something, I, I went into it. We can talk about it, but I'm a cake decorator by, by trade, actually. And that's, oh, that's, okay. that's how I pay my bills. So okay. um, I always offer my services. If, I, if anyone's engaged, I, can, I got you with a wedding cake. If you've got kids, I got birthday cakes. I, I can do it. And it's, it's something I like to just give as a gesture because I know not everybody has access to that. And it's nice to just be that for someone mm. and um, to give that. I just like making people happy, you know? Mm-hmm. So long story short, I gave my card to Chuck and I ended up making his wedding cake. Um, and it's for me, I'm, I'm the biggest Mark ever. You should know this by now. It's just like, yes. I just, I love the world of wrestling. I love it brings us all together. I love mm-hmm. that it's for everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean, everybody, big, small, mm-hmm. short, tall, dark, light. It doesn't matter who you are. Wrestling's for you if you want it. And we're here to give it to you. You know, we're here to have a good time. So Things like having it come full circle from shitting on Chuck O'Neill with literally four or five signs, if not more, at different shows. I get to make his wedding cake. Like, it just came full circle. And moments like that are what I live for. It's just to start as a fan, to go on a whim, to not know who they are, then show up the next show with a sign shitting on them, and then you befriend them. And that's kind of how it was with Kylon, too, where I, I, I ribbed him. I ribbed the Miracle Generation, but... I can't get me enough Miracle Generation <laughs> as pretty much I've been watching your videos and everybody has something good to say about those boys. Yeah. And they are just killing it from yeah. Connecticut to Maine and then some just I'm proud of them boys. I really mm-hmm. am. It's just mm-hmm. nice to see them. To, I was I forget what show it was that I think it might have been um, a beyond show, but Flash Waller held the door for me one day. Just just opening the door, paying his dues. I remember that. I remember buying pizza from a Miss Little Mean Kathleen before she wasn't so mean. Mm-hmm. These people who we've followed and still look up to, I'm still starstruck anytime I see these people, anytime they come through that curtain, they're our superheroes. And anytime I see them, I'm psyched. So when I enter somewhere and I hear, hey, Greg, I turn around and it's the talent calling me? Me? I get what I, I get it. It's what I do. I, I get I, I get a pop in this net, but like at the same time, I have a ticket. Mm-hmm. I'm going there to watch some wrestling, and anything right. else that happens in between, before, after, that's extra. That's just the icing on the cake, baby. <laughs> it really is. I'm a thousand percent with you, my man. There's been multiple things in different times of my life over the course of the past six years. That, like you said, that you will never forget ever just because of, you know, and it's not a matter of being 
you've we'll use little me little <laughs> i don't want lmk i'm just gonna say that because i don't like to piss her off lmk uh you've seen her in a different part of her life and then growing into what she is now we're seeing her on the television uh yeah. being the AEW dark if you will Beautiful. um so Beautiful. you've seen these stages of their life as a fan now we're not talking about writing letters and trying to get all up in their personal business and hey can i come over i see you're having a birthday party trying to self-invite and being a weirdo and that's not what we do what we do is exactly what greg pretty much laid out we do our own thing and if it catches on with the talent and it takes on a different life of its own that's so fucking organic and you can never recreate that type of stuff and it happens because of the centrality of wrestling period very true and it has nothing to do with me cheering x wrestler or me booing x wrestler as you stated it's the consistency of returning doing your thing that shows this your support for their art Absolutely. With you bringing the effing creativity to the table that you bring, my my word, Craig. You know, it, it's fun. What can I say? But those are the things that the talent see extra. Because now, not only was there a heel Chuck O'Neill with his face on a heel, there was a different one, and it progressed to another one, and it was a different one. Maybe there was a storyline that happened at the second show, so the third show, you made something that represented that show. And these things kind of all happen organically, and I don't think you can do that in any other sport. And, and I legitimately say soccer, football, baseball, no matter what it is, I don't think you can have a fan base to where these things actually happen. To what we're describing. Mm -hmm. Very true. It's it's really it's magic, and all it takes is a little for you to just kind of like let yourself go and not take life so seriously. And that's that's what I go to wrestling for. It's like it's an escape. It's entertainment. It's socializing. I I haven't had like a social life in years. I was at a job that I couldn't go to wrestling. My out time was a question mark, and I couldn't make shows, and the only shows I'd be able to make were the Brockton shows down the street, which would happen every four months or so. So now I'm at a place that I can shine, still do what I do, love what I do, be creative every day, make people happy. My coworkers ask me, oh, Greg, you got wrestling this week? <laughs> Shout out to Vinny, Donna, everybody <laughs> at Arts Bakery, 104 Forge River Parkway, Raynham, Massachusetts. Come yeah, on, baby. Yes, yes. What up, baby? Uh, yeah, it's man. Cool. <laughs> He's gonna kill me tomorrow. Anyway. Um, no. Um. <laughs> but now we're chit chatting as fans that have been going for more than per se two, three, four, six months, even twelve months. We'll say, okay. This whatever I'm doing now, I. Never. And I, my family still says this to this effing day, Greg. Who would have ever thought, like, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, 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 a dear friend of mine, Vincenzo uh, Jr. over here in our area in Connecticut. I can never, uh, I forget how to say his last name and he laughs at me all the time, so I don't say it. Uh, but he runs Tough and Talented out of Torrington, okay. Connecticut. He's done some really cool stuff, like a 25-year celebration for Slick Wagner Brown. Uh, we did a very beautiful uh, tribute show. Or he did, not we. He did it, it, right after the passing of our brother, Big Jim. Um, things like that. He does really special stuff. We just I don't know why I say we. Um, because he always says I'm part of the company, and I'm not. I'm just... I'm a dude with a phone that just loves wrestling, but he keeps trying to suck me in and he keeps, he keeps telling me I'm one of the boys when I'm really not, hey, you know what I'm saying? But these are the things that warm my heart when they say stuff like that, Greg, because um, I'm a future hall of famer and I'm not patting myself on the back, but fucking Vincenzo is putting me in the class of 2023 in his very first ever hall of fame and tough and talented. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, so to circle back, 
I never set out when I grabbed my phone and went to my very first uh, PVP show up in uh, South Hadley. I never, never set out to, in six years, I'm going to have X subscribers and I'm going to know X amount of wrestlers and I'm going to do X amount of things. Never. I went there on a fucking whim just to get away from my depression of not playing music anymore. There you go. So you I picked up, yes, I picked up indie wrestling nice. and it never stopped since I went. So you go, I, I, personally, I went there, I would do like 20, 30 second clips because I know you can't film matches. So yeah. I would, I would read the room I, or I would read the ring and I would see something coming up and I would whip it out, record. Hopefully I got what I saw coming, you know, seven to eight out of 10 times. I was pretty correct. You know, I, I can't see everything and I missed some stuff. But that's how it started. And the reason why I bring all of this up, and I know I'm kind of chit-chatting here, is the relationships and the friendships that are made. We're talking about the signs with Chuck coming full circle, doing his cake for his wedding, for crying out loud. Uh, You never, ever sought out to make a sign to fuck with a wrestler or to support a wrestler or however you want to perceive it uh, on, on both flip sides. To have be like, you know what? I think in about four years, that motherfucker's gonna, I'm gonna make his wedding cake, you know, kind of scenario. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's amazing the connections we've we've both <laughs> made, you know, in the wrestling world, and just I don't realize it, but it's a it's such, well, it is a family, you know. I I call it my family, and you either get wrestling or you don't, and the people who do get it, they 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 really just they shine. They really do. It's just something that you, you can't describe. And, you know, we've tried, I've tried to drag people to shows. I've, I've opened people's eyes to the independent circuit and it's beautiful to people. When you say wrestling, everybody just thinks WWE, WWF, WWF, like that's all <laughs> they think of. That's it. And I can't, I, I feel like I'm screaming when I say these kids that we're seeing today have and yeah. will like will and have we've seen half the AEW roster I've seen come out of being on wrestling and oh yeah and every I get to watch half these people every Thursday you know on wrestling open or when they did uncharted uncharted territory it was incredible to say oh look there's Chris Statlander and now it's on on TV like mm-hmm. in less than a year it's beautiful <clears throat> but that ha- that's another thing in wrestling that I always talk about the evolution of wrestling. Um, that is something that's evolved in wrestling that we've never seen the likes of the way things happen now. Perfect example, Chris Statlander. Uh, seeing her a regular on Beyond and plus the indie scene. And then she gets an AEW Dark. She gets a little more AEW Dark. They dig her. She gets an AEW contract. I'm going to use one more example. But it happened just like that. And I... One George all. We knew who he was previous. I don't want anybody to monetize me, Mr. Tony Khan or anybody like that. I cannot use his previous identity, so I will not. Uh, one George all. Uh, one of the most amazing humans I've ever met in my entire life. Would see him event after event after event in my local area and others spreading his name, his face, his brand, trying to get to a different platform. He gets one thing, one shot on AW Dark. And Greg, I shit you not, it just seemed like that guy has never left AEW. They must assign him immediately on the dotted line. The look, the professionalism of him. And I know how he is behind the scenes. He's an absolute professional through and through. He looks amazing. His physique, his gear, his mindset, he... His in-ring work capacity, everything you want out of a professional wrestler, George all has got it. And he's a beautiful human. There's just that extra element that is an added bonus when you get a guy like George all to sign on a dotted line. Now, I, I know they didn't shoot him to the top and make all sorts of different things happen with him, but he's That's still the there. He makes a difference. You see him on a regular basis. Uh, take over if you, with a George Jaw. Please continue with that because I know you're familiar with him. No, oh, very familiar, and I am familiar with his alter ego that we're not going to talk about as well. <laughs> we've been following him for that long. 
I've watched Jonah Joel wrestle in a Texas Roadhouse parking lot. Okay? That's what I love is telling people where I've seen wrestling. Like, what, what are you talking about? Like, well, we drove two and a half hours to see some free wrestling at a uh, Texas Roadhouse parking lot. Uh, Zero like, One USA? USA? I didn't mean to interrupt. Zero One USA oh, no, or something like that? You know, I honestly, I believe it was Zero One USA because it was early on with AG's, that's his promotion, yes. right? Or, yeah. Yes, so yes, that's it. It was before he announced that was his promotion. And, um, but we just went, it was like today or yesterday. It was crazy hot, stupid hot. And everybody was finding shade wherever they could. And I remember the wrestlers were just like beck beckoning people to like, come on, come closer, come watch the show. And it was a tough day, but I remember seeing like, 30 people come out of an eight by eight foot tent with no, there was no trailer, no nothing. And I was scratching my head. Like they're all dressing in there, sweating balls. And I can't believe this, that I got to see all this talent that I've wanted to see for a while. I remember leaving. I scream out the window, Jara! just those memories that we make. And yeah. I get to say, I've seen incredible wrestling in a Texas roadhouse parking lot. Uh, now, the only reason why I cl uh, clicked in my brain, because that was like a two and a half, three hour drive for me. Easy. Uh, I remember it specifically because one of uh, our dear friends that I, I've loved ever since we've uh, gained a relationship uh, is Eric Hunting. We're going to actually be closing fan week. We're not only doing five this week, boys and girls. We're gonna, <laughs> I know I'm a jacket. We're doing an extra. We're doing a sixth episode this week. Ooh, uh, and, and Eric Hunting, brother Eric, friend of Eric, is going to be closing us off on Fan Week. Uh, but he went to that specific show. So that's okay. why it really clicks with me. And he described it just like you did. It was hot AF yeah. and it was a rough day, but we had a blast. You know, if I'm going to a show, I know what I'm getting myself into. I know it's going to be hot. I had a bottle of water. I had a couple signs that I didn't debut because I, I get nervous too, believe it or not. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, not everybody's bringing a sign to a show. I'd love to see more signs at shows, but I feel like every promotion kind of has like one, maybe two people who once in a while just kind of, you know, do a little bit. There's one guy that comes to shows, he writes his own signs like on the spot, you know, so he, he brings a big chisel sharpie and goes to town. <laughs> I respect that. Me, I take a little bit more time and hopefully the person shows up. I brought signs to shows that card is always subject to change and Right. Still wait. Still waiting on one person at uh, Fight Life coming up. I hope they show oh. up. So we'll see. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, keep your eyes peeled, uh, my friends, because as you can tell, and that's what we're gonna uh, kind of roll into here. We've talked about this, <laughs> the setting behind Mr. Isaacson right now. All right. Now we see this is all made from him, and that's only just a snippet of what he's created. All right. Um, the creativity that you bring to the table is something different than maybe others do. I, all right, let me, let me rephrase that. A lot of guys that bring signs, always creative, because if you're not creative, you're not thinking outside the box and you're not bringing these signs and trying to engage just a little bit more. All right. So it's a respect for all the sign people. I don't want to exclude exclude anybody, the sign people. But uh, when you take the time and you're doing these pictures, these colors, I don't know what's involved in them. That's what we're diving into. The creativity of Greg is kind of off the charts, if you ask me. And I almost want to say he's a little fucked up, but aren't we all? Uh, but... <laughs> You know. uh, the, <laughs> the cake decorating, the, the creativity with the hands and the mind and making things come to life. Let's get into that with the creativity of these signs. Why uh, so much further of a level than maybe like a Joey G? Everything is handwritten. It's, it's legible. It sends a very clear message. Dan, you suck. The mission is a cult. Shit like that. Uh, you know, I, I just shared one, um, uh, Mike Skyros laughing hysterically. Well, not hysterically, but you know, the Mike Skyros laugh. And he's pointing at Joey G's sign that says brother lameness instead of brother greatness. See, that got, that got a little pop out of Greg. So it's all creativity. 
But Greg goes a few steps further. Uh, why these extra steps of the creativity here? Bring us in on your world here. I guess what it comes down to is what I have available to me and the dimensions I have to work in. Dollar Tree has some very, very nice poster board at a very reasonable price. Not a dollar, as we all know now, but still, <laughs> yeah. um, So I work usually in dimensions of 20 inches by 30 inches. That's where my, my creative palette is. I'll have an idea, and you know, if it goes a little bit bigger than that, you can always add on some poster board. But that's kind of where I, I wrap my brain around. And there have been posters too big for the bag, you know, and stupid stuff. But, uh, you know, bigger the better, definitely. Uh, less is more. That's another one of my mottos, I guess you'd call it. Just, okay. you, can, you can write a paragraph on a sign, but I don't want someone to have to read that. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you need a few more words than others, but less is more. So, you know, something as simple as like, you know, my friend Stephen Lust, right? I do. I love me some Stephen right, Lust. The right stuff. Stephen Lust, we love us some Stephen Lust in this house. And, you know, I, I, you know, he's always calling people chuds. So I think chud, chud life, thug life. And then we do the chud life. <laughs> so... It, it, it comes to me at odd hours of the night. It comes to me when I'm at work and I just write things down in my phone. My girlfriend uh, is a saint. She'll take any idea I have. I can bounce it off her at any time of day. I'll say, hey, babe. She'll be like, this for a sign. Every single time. So <laughs> it, it, for me, it's just, it fills my bucket. It It's my spark. It It gives me something to motivate me and keep me going. Um, I can do it. I have the time to do it. And I know that all my my brothers and sisters in the wrestling world, they, they love it. So why wouldn't I keep doing this and go bigger and just the more obnoxious I can, I can get, why not? Like, why not? So things like seeing you and Q just go at it constantly. <laughs> I've never shaken your hand. I've never met you. And yet, here we are. I was headed to the end new World Wrestling Extreme show. I knew Q would be there. And I was in fear for my life. I genuinely thought this guy was going to hurt me. <laughs> I, every time I think, I might get punched in the face tonight. Just thinking I might have taken that, that step. But like I said, <laughs> they love it. They eat it up. Just, we got Q. I don't know if you can see him. He's he's uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh somewhere over here. But I turned him into Caillou. You know, <laughs> I've sent you pictures. I, I've che we've cheesed on Q on images that haven't even seen the light of day. That we're just talking about that no one will ever know. But all I can say is the Lollipop Guild never looked more cute. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you yes. Just, I'm sure you just saw recently the ribs that they were given Shady Shea Cash, the heavy hitter. I don't know if you saw that. It's I have. Endless. Endless. But does he hate it? No. He accepts it and lives it up. It's a badge of honor to get ribbed. And the better the rib, the further it gets, the further it goes. There was what? 20, I don't even know how many people with his face as their profile picture. <laughs> and I just I didn't do it myself I would, I would, but at the same time sometimes I just like to sit back and relax and just watch the hilarity that has been created and again it's just I've never had like a bunch of brothers or this and that so I, I've, I've always like liked the wrestling world and the ribbing and, and that comes, comes to it and whatnot but I've never been part of it so the signs kind of got my foot in with the ribs and mm. You learn a little bit about this person and that person. Like, let's take Harry Brooks for for instance. Have you ever heard of Harry Brooks, the Golden I, Boy? I sure have. Well, that, <laughs> that, that kid. That, yeah, he he can talk. He, he can, <laughs> yeah, he can talk. Anyway, <laughs> he, uh, he had an unfortunate accident and he lost about half of his finger. So, people ask me, do you come up with all your ideas? No. Do you facilitate them all? Yes. Every sign you see here, I've made myself. But sometimes my girlfriend, Kathy, she comes up with some fucking zinger. <laughs> and 
a fan favorite of many of the peeps at RWA was the 4.5 finger death punch. Ah, look at that thing, boys and girls. Oh my God, that's freaking money. So little things like that, when he's, yeah, right, right, shut up, shut up. I'm the golden boy, Harry Brooks. And then he turns that corner and he stops in his tracks. And he's like, <laughs> what? I feel my phone going off in my pocket. All the boys in the back watching on the monitor are like, yo, the 4.5 big adult fight. I can't. <laughs> so, <laughs> moments like that are why I do what I do, why I spend the time I spend. And I don't care. I mean, I don't care how much time I spend as long as it looks okay. I'm my own worst critic. You ask my girlfriend, she probably says I spend a little too much time, but she's a saint and she, she eats <laughs> up every minute of this too. Um, it is just so damn fun to make these connections, these little inside jokes, these little inside things, and I could probably talk all day about wrestling. I really could. <laughs> <laughs> um, the creativity of it. Now, some of it looks quite involved, and I know you say, you know, uh, less is better, and you, you and Chad Life as an example, which is absolute fire. Uh, oh, but yeah. I see that there's a lot of work involved with the colors and the lettering and it's very uh polished looking and it's not half-assed done and it's not hurried and it looks very time like you said time consuming you're taking your time and you're spending some really uh a lot of your time out of your life to create these but i see some have legitimate pictures of faces obviously we started with my stupid ass face at the beginning we see the kylons we see the mass hole over there uh, we see uh, the Alec Price that comes out of a fucking Cracker Jack box, boys and girls. It's the most oh absolute. Goodness. I never seen a sound like that in my entire life. It's a Cracker Jack box, and you pull the prize out, and it's fucking Alex Price's face. Are you kidding me? Um, so things like that are, for me, <laughs> it, it's the interactive signs. They really took <laughs> off, too, where I, I'm like, okay, you can hold up a sign, but then, wait, what's it doing? Like <laughs> what's it one doing? Your friend with the beautiful smile, Mike Grassa, um, the mind eraser. You know how he always comes out and he's got his head in there. He does that. <laughs> so I just, I, I put a little thing on the back so his head can go up and down. And, his head <laughs> can go up. and I think that was the first interactive sign. But people ask, how do you do it? Oh, how do you do it? I'll explain it to you so I don't have to keep explaining it. Okay. I, utilize, I utilize Microsoft Word. And it's more or less a mosaic process where, say, you take Kylon's head right here. I take his head, I crop it as best I can, and I told you I work in the size of 20 by 30, so if it's, you know, wide, I just take his head 20 inches wide, multiply the pages on the document, and just kind of cookie cutter it together. That's it. Hmm. Print it out at Staples, uh, use some spray glue adhesive, so time, the hardest part is probably matching certain images up and making it look fluid. So you think right. that all these heads are like, oh, you, you see them at like a, a, a stadium show, a WWE show or something, and you know, it's these giant heads of, how do they do that? Well, sometimes you can send away for those, and they cost a stupid amount of money. I'd rather just do it myself. And it, if you look at a sign, and it's a full-colored sign on a full poster board, it costs roughly anywhere between like one to five bucks. That's like basics. Certain okay. take more, certain take less. The interactive ones, they take more time. Sometimes I got to crack open the glue gun, you know, but it's fun. It's fun to have an idea, throw it throw it against somebody and be like, what do you think? Is this, will that work? They'll be like, oh, my God, do it. And then I just, I take it to paper, sketch it out, and it goes on a computer. It's, uh, yeah, Facebook is a very, very, very useful tool, especially with candid photos. And <laughs> The ones that people don't want you to see or use. If it's on Facebook, I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna spin back to the uh, the heavy hitter Shay and yeah. his face, boys and girls. I know not everybody's seen this, but his face was all blown up. He had this crazy, crazy ass face going on, and like Greg said, there was at least this infectious thing happened on on the, on one day. And everybody changed your profile picture to his face. So I started seeing it. And not only that, they were making uh, Photoshop pictures and making memes out of it and whatnot and doing all of this crazy shit. I had no clue 
what the context of what was going on at all, but it was absolutely infectious with the fans, the talents, and they were having so much fun with it. And somebody reached out and told me that I should do something. And I go, but I don't even know what any of this means. He goes, it doesn't matter. Do something because you always make fucking crazy shit with the talent. Yeah. So I'm floating through Facebook and I see one of these pages that takes the uh, SummerSlam poster or match card, if you will. And it's been Brock and it's been Roman. Well, not on this page. It's been an array of, and I'm just using examples, from fucking Betty Cracker against Betty White to whatever. But, I mean, it's just been wrestlers. I'm just using stupid names. I love it. But it's been random ass wrestlers instead of Roman and Brock photoshopped for the SummerSlam graphic. So I seen one of them, and it was Triple H against fucking Vince or somebody. I forgot what it was. I took Shay's uh, photo and I slapped that shit on there and it came out perfect and I shared it. And I even started with, I apologize in advance. One Mr. Bobby Rossi says, do not apologize. Rib with, uh, it's all, it's all ribbed. uh, Hashtag rib love is what he said. Uh, So I still don't know the context from it. And I went with it anyways. And I got a few kicks out of it, even from one heavy hitter Shay. Uh, Shay Cash. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I didn't know what it stemmed from, the inside of it, but God damn, it was fun just joining in a little bit. Shay is, without a doubt, one of the... <laughs> he's a great wrestler. He, he's, great. he's great all around, but what a sweetheart. I'm going to say it. I don't care. That man, that boy, that child, I don't care. He is one of the nicest people I've ever met. But regardless of that, damn, he can throw a punch, too. <laughs> yes. the they don't yeah. call him the heavy hitter enough. No, no. Um, yeah, may, may be a kind soul, but he will F you up. Uh, F you up. I would uh, not want to be in the ring with him. There are certain yeah, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, no, I would not. And, and, and I'm built like a candle. I shatter like peanut brittle. So I'm, I'm not into that stuff. Uh, That's why I'm always on the outside of the ring. But I wanted to spin back a little bit um, to the connections and getting to a point to where you're at in your life with wrestling and the talent. Um, And I wanted to kind of associate myself and yourself because, um, like I said earlier, it just happens. It's not like there was a goal set out to do or whatever is happening right now in our in our lives uh so you don't know what you're going to be walking into doing these signs you don't know what i mean at this point it's a different animal but when you're starting this you got to be very nervous being like i don't know what this dude's going to say to me i could get the opposite results of what i think is funny which i say to my which i say to myself all the time believe me Believe me, you. But as a fan doing these things, taking on a personality within wrestling and at some of these promotions, if you will, I know I'm a skinny dude, but my skin can handle stuff because I make fun of myself probably more than them MFers do. Maybe even equal. Maybe maybe it's a 50-50 road on that. I don't know. But you have to have a set of thick skin on you when you're jumping in and want to interact and try to get something rolling and maybe get a little ha ha's out of the guys or girls at CD signs or whatever. Um, So you have to be walking in a little bit nervous doing these signs and whatnot, and you got to have thick skin. So talk to us about that. Well, definitely. uh, I've I've talked about how I've I've wanted to just, to go as hard as I can, but with a little bit of respect, you know, I've turned Masha Slamovich into a Moscow mule. Uh, I thought that was like, <laughs> was a... <laughs> shut the, shut the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I debuted that sign at a top rope show. She popped huge and was like, you know, like, fuck you. And 
swear to me in Russian. It was great. <laughs> I talked to her at halftime. She did not seem enthused. So I kind of uh. just backed away, and that was that. I then, uh, since we, we, you've been talking about Fight Life, I've been talking about Fight Life. Everybody should be talking about Fight Life. Regardless, she went to Fight Life, and I brought the sign back. And this is it. She popped wow. huge, and we saw her leaving. And I said, "Can I grab a picture with you?" Again, not knowing since like probably a good year plus if she was pissed, got a kick out of it. I had no idea. She seemed pissed off. So I go up and I say, "Can I grab a picture? Do you hate me?" She goes, "Why?" I'm like the size. She goes, "No, nah, man. I pop so big." So, so that's all. I'm. I can. I can make you pop. If you need it, just let me know. Shoot me a message. That's what I always say. If you want to make something happen, feel free to shoot me a message. No joke. And I'll pull some strings and try to make things happen. But there's been a few moments um, like that, but not, not too many. Yeah, nothing on the flip side of the embracing of the signs. Nothing like, who the fuck do you think you are? Or, you know, and any, any you know, stupid jazz on the flip side of that? No, not from the talent. Uh, <laughs> the, oh. Well, I'll say it like this. Wrestling is very family-oriented. It's also <laughs> adult-oriented, depending on where you go. Like, you can go to a Beyond show, and that's very adult-oriented. You can go to a Top Rope show, and it's family-oriented. Um, Wearing-wise, I don't know. It's you, I, I don't do too much profanity on the signs themselves. It's more like something that would go over kids' heads, you know? Like we just, yeah, yeah. well, we just made a Johnny Sin sign for uh, Matt Magnum, who fights out of Top Rope. Me and my boy Ryan, and we've been waiting to debut that one. But okay. just things okay. like that, just like to rib. But the kid says, "Who's that?" or "What's that?" and the parent can either know what it is and explain it, or just say, "Ah, that's nothing." But <laughs> with a name like Matt Magnum, I made a sign that said, "Magnum couldn't fill one if he tried." So when you go to shows, you're a face, a familiar face with people and see you. Oh, what do you got this week? And I'm like, uh, you'll have to wait and see. I, I never reveal them. I always make people wait till the moment. But yeah, I've literally seen moms move their kids from one side of the venue to the other so they don't see the signs. So <laughs> that's all I can say. I don't go too hard, but it is, it's wrestling. Come on. It's, it's wrestling. It, it, it is uh, the thick skin, please. I mean, you know, I, I know there's lines. There's plenty of lines to not cross in the year 2022, but just a little bit thicker. Just a little like bit. I, I just I walk on the tightrope. I've not, <laughs> not fallen yet, but I'm always walking that tightrope. When I and I'll tell you, when I turned, you know, uh, the wild man Congo, he uh, to me he resembled a baked potato. So oh. I turned him into one. Oh! And, and he, like, wanted the sign. He, he bumped into my dad at the venue and was like, yo, were you with that guy with the potato sign? <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's my son. Can I have that? <laughs> so, moments like that where, I, like I said, I think this guy is going to put me through the ring. But at the end of the day, he values what I did, even though I was shitting all over him. All over him. But it comes back and I'm like, hey, okay. Uh, Being creative uh, makes people happy, man. It's a two very simple yet very rewarding thing. Um do you feel at this point, because I mean we've been talking creativity and um people kind of come to expect Greg with what does he have at this show? Uh, a couple things. First off, have you ever showed up at a sign, uh, at a show and just, and I know we we all have our bad days and whatnot, but have you ever just been one of those events where you're like, I don't want to drag a bag. I don't want to spend a week's worth of time getting these things together. Show up at a show with empty hands and uh, get a, hey, what the fuck are you doing? You're the guy with the signs. Now that's question one. Question two, uh, sub, I guess, question here. At this point, do you feel pressured 
with what <laughs> with what you do <laughs> uh, to maintain a creative level or even you know surpassing last month or last Kylon sign. I need to make one better than the last time. Or so pressure. And have you ever shown up with nothing and got like what the fuck? First off, have I shown up with nothing and gotten what the fuck? Yes. <laughs> and I just remember it, it came down to, you know what, always, I don't, I average like eight to 10 plus signs. I'm not kidding now because I'm like, I was never in the Boy Scouts, but uh, be prepared. Just that's what my motto. <laughs> you know, Cards up has changed. Mottos. Less is more, be prepared. Because frankly, there have been people, like I'll kick myself, be like, I thought of bringing that sign thinking maybe this person will be there and they show up. So, mm. you know, that's what happened. So it was one time it was at the chop shop. I want to say it was, it might've been a watch this fight. I think it was a watch this fight. Um, but I believe I brought, I don't think I brought any signs. And I, I said to myself, I'm like, I'm just going to try it. No signs. I'm just going to relax tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to take a load off. And it, it bit me in the ass. Cause I felt, <laughs> I felt stupid. Guys, and you didn't bring any signs. What are you doing? <laughs> so, has that happened? Yes, once. Therefore, okay. I if I go to a show, I've always had signs. I just, I, I just, it happened, and it has gotten to a point where, where we're getting to know all this talent, and so I'll see someone perform, and then I'll see them at a show I'm going to, and I'll get jazzed, and I want to make them a sign. And then they'll be fighting with someone else who I wanted to see. So it's like pick and choose. Do I want to have a sign for each person for each match? No, like <laughs> it, it's tough. Yeah. Doing this today, it's like I, I have I have signs I didn't touch in the other room. I got signs right here that you're not seeing. It 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 was very overwhelming. I get, I overwhelm myself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, this is stupid. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, come on now. I had, I had three titles for this show. I kept changing it with some of the stuff we've talked about. I think this is going to be the new title. Look at this, Don. It's stupid. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's going to be the title. That's a final title. That's my final it. answer. That's it. I love it. Do it. Do it. Do it. I love it. I did not mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. So, numbers wise, I guess all I can say is however many I can fit in the bag. You know, I, I do as many as I can. I have sometimes I have more ideas than I do hands. Like, I, we were going to go, we went to the, um, the CWA, Colonial Wrestling Alliance show with uh matt cardona and uh brian malonis a bunch of big names and um it was a big show and i brought signs i didn't know who was going to be there sort of this and that i tried some new stuff tried some old stuff it was a good time it was a good time and uh yeah i still have some pictures i have to debut well but, uh, Dave, i can't wait Dave, to see him i picked um, the Dave and kills it do you feel the pressure from the boys, if you will, to kind of, you know, bring those and, you know, be very creative and not, you know. It's tough when you befriend someone and then you show up without a sign for them. Or you know, <laughs> it, it, it can be like, I, I feel bad sometimes. The same goes for like uh, shows running on the same day or something right. like that. It yeah. kills me. It kills yeah. me to have to choose. It's like you're it's like, Absolutely. it's tough. But, uh, I try to just kind of do it on a premise of who I haven't seen. It's more of a variety. Mm -hmm. I like, I just try to learn something new every show. I try to meet new people. I just, I'm like you, I'm like a sponge. I just try to learn more and more. People, you might think I know more than I do. I really don't know. I'm just a big old Mark who likes to make signs. That's it. That's it. And I don't know something. Same thing. Uh, I've been questioned about some talents. Uh, across country if you will and i mean i know a lot of talents in our area and i even know a lot of talents out of our area and such but there are some people that you know will ask me for information and i'm like i've never heard of said person they're like you never heard of said i, I and i'll be like bro 
there's like, and, and I know there's a lot, of, a very small percentage of people in this world that are, are wrestlers, but there's a lot of fucking wrestlers out there, man. I don't know them. I don't know them all. Uh, you know, so it's very hard, especially with, you know, as flourishing as wrestling is nowadays. And I think there's more uh, young talent coming up that, uh, not young talent, but young people that just want wrestling they want to be wrestlers they see or what it's it's different again we talk about the evolution it's not like it was before there's more people than ever wanting to become a wrestler both me uh female male uh transgender whatever you know is going on because wrestling is for everyone and it's there i've seen i have a post that i probably made in 2017 i started going to wrestling probably Wicked late 2015 or early 2016. I know it was in the winter. I do know that because it was cold AF. But there was, in 2017, I remember it vividly. It was wrestling. Is, I, I love wrestling specifically because it's for everyone. And I went through religion, creed, race, tall, skinny, trans, gay, straight. I went through basically all the ones that I could, the words I could pretty much think of. And I tried to repost that as it comes through on my memories because son of a bitch, Greg, if wrestling isn't really for everybody, and I'm not changing the title to that because that's not what I want. No, that's not what I want. <laughs> that was one of the titles previously. Um, but um, that's what I do with these interviews. I don't care if all of those that we've just listed, uh, you know, timekeeper, uh, bell ringer, uh, announcer, and all of the race, religion, creed, and trans and gay and straight, all of those. Come on, STP. Let's talk wrestling. Let's talk your career. Let me, at least if I can put that that bit of a little spotlight, some kind of little ray of sun somewhere on that specific talent, that's all I care about. And getting information to the fans. That's my second thing about doing STP. But mainly, it's just to get that little shine whatever I can on the talent that we see in the ring. And that's why I always go for a local independent or, you know, I I've interviewed across the country or whatever, but local independent wrestlers, not somebody that's on TV, not somebody that's been on TV. And I'm trying to grab that's come off of WWE went to AEW, but then they went to ROH, but now they're back on the Indies. I'm not trying to get those guys. I want the LMKs. And such the Kylon Kings and the Dustin Wallers and what we see nowadays that are upcoming. You're gonna have um, to grab them quick. Yeah, and, and and that's why the show was always built was to let them tell their stories and have the fans be a little bit more open behind the scenes to pull the curtain back with the talent that we know. And that was really that was my very first reasoning of starting it. Um, was to hear their stories. I was being selfish with that one, but I wanted to hear their stories and let them share it and have the fans be part of that. It was just a little bit more than the shit that we talk about at merch tables with the eight by tens and buying a shirts that we only get a couple minutes with, you know, you found your niche, you know, and not many people can say that you, you found something that it's not just, you're just not just a wrestling fan. You, you, you created an outlet to share with everybody. And again, it's like, I tell people who've heard of you, I tell people who haven't heard of you, check out Stirring the Pot. And it's anything you could ever want. You know, you found your niche. I found my niche. People say, oh, do you want to get into the wrestling business? Do you want to become a rep? Do you want to become, not, not really. My, my body hurts just watching those peeps, you know? And my signs <laughs> are falling down, so that's a good sign. <laughs> but that's the thing is, if you want to do it, you can. All you have to do is ask, you know? Phoenix will, will help anybody. Anybody. I feel like you know that. He's one of the people I respect the most in this industry. I, I've seen T hand, lend a hand out to more people than I could count. And I like what I do. I can tell you like what you do. We all have our little spot. And that's what's beautiful about it is you can kind of create your own spot. I like what I do. I like showing up. I like shooting the shit. I like finding our spot. I like repping our crew wear. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yep. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I know you're going to keep doing what you're doing. And yes. let's hope all our friends keep doing what they're doing. And kick some yeah. ass. Absolutely. Um, now, you mentioned something that I just want to 
pas jose. Uh, that's French for pause. Um, now, do you want to be a ref? Do you want to maybe try to be a, a, a ring announcer? Or maybe that seems great on paper. Maybe my eyes and see a little bit of stars by being in the business. Okay. But you kind of without hesitation, like, nah, I got my own lane. I know what I want. I know what I'm feeling. And I know, you know, what I have outside of wrestling in my life. But this is what I like. This is what I like to do. This is what I like to bring to the table for the wrestling community or the wrestling industry. Because that's what that's what I'm doing. Okay. Now. You're going to do something, do it well. And you're doing it well. You know? I, 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 and likewise, sir. Uh, sir, I, I appreciate those kind words. Now, have I been asked to uh, be a ref? Commentator, ring announcer, uh, a, a color play-by-play, uh, be part of the company, be creative, uh, drive to different states to uh, create different companies that wanted to start, uh, book, uh, do all sorts of stuff. I've said no to all of them. Now, here's my thing because of, and I don't go to as many shows as I used to. I would go to an average on my average was 15 a month, but I'm wow. driving to like three different states, four different states to get those accomplished. I'm putting a lot of miles on my car. I'm spending a lot of time in my car uh, on the road, uh, money, food, gas, you know, all of that. And, and I'm not saying, you know, pat me on the back because I'm doing it on my time. I'm just saying what I'm doing as a fan. Okay. We, we do this on our time and our dollar. As he said, you know, the, these little, you know, these create this creativity is never for free <laughs> it, does it does cost a little bit but this is what yeah i can you know but this is our choice these are our choices that we brought to the table okay now i don't go to as many as i used to but i still try to get out there i still try to go to different ones so i can see more talent maybe see new upcoming talent whatnot and i know i'm in a bubble and where I do go, to be honest with you. Um, but I try to see what I can on the old medias and whatnot. And I know it's not the same, especially it's never not the same, not being there live. But that's kind of where I feel that's my lane. I can go to shows when I want. I don't have to be uh, weighed down by dates. I don't have to be weighed down by X company schedule. And let's be honest, Greg. It, just like life, and I'm not saying it's in wrestling, just like life, the politics, the drama, the, the cat fights back there. Okay. We even touch on that. It's all there. Just, yeah, just like life, it's over there. I don't want to be none of that because I love, I, I am right, right down the middle. I'm right down the middle, my man. Like we were speaking earlier, thin, fat, short, black, white, tall, it doesn't matter. I will always be right down the middle. If you hate somebody, I'm not going to hate them too. It is what it is. I'm sorry that you have that relationship. Don't put me on board on your express. I, I don't want to get on the hate express, okay? So I've always stayed down the middle. So I did not want to ever get involved into, you can't go to X company because you work here. Yeah. I don't want to hear stuff like that. So Wrestling is wrestling, and I don't care where you wrestle. Yes, yes. It's wrestling. But that's reality, and I know – behind the scenes on somewhat where the reality lies and what it brings to the table. And I'm not saying boys and girls, I am not saying that's in every company and I'm not saying that's rampant throughout wrestling. I'm just saying just like life, it exists. Okay. So that's why I really never kind of put a stamp on. I want to go to X promotion and be X talent. You know, it gives me the freedom to do, the Donkey K Center in K Files and take pictures with the wrestling fam and do my uh, match footage and clip stuff and have fun while I'm at the shows and whatnot. It wouldn't be the same if I did that. Nope. So I like doing right. what I'm doing. That's I just me. do. I stay in my lane, my man. And I know I, I might have went on just a couple more minutes uh, too much, but I love everyone that I've met. I love all the promotions I've gone to. I love any offer that's ever come to me, but I just stay in my lane, you know? Respectful. I get it. And, and that's another thing. When I'm 
when I'm uh, offered something like a ring announcer, which has been, I can't even count how many fucking promotions. Oh my God. Because they feel that I have a personality and I know the talent and I already have a relationship set with so many that may be frequent through their doors or what have you. Um, but I, I, I'm not fucking, there's a closet right behind me. There was only one pair of dress pants and one fucking dress shirt and one tie. That's it. It's all filled with wrestling fucking shirts and jeans. I'm not a prof- I'm not that guy. First off, I'm not that guy that's going to dress professionally every show. I would rather be me, and that's not what a professional ring announcer does. That's first off. Second off, I don't want to take away from the likes of the beautiful people we see on uh, on the scene now, and just in my immediate area in Connecticut. I just want to say Matt the Court as a perfect example. I don't want to take money from Matt Decord. I don't want to take work away from him. I don't want to take shine and have exposure taken away from him because maybe another company wants me to do it full time. Fuck that. Get you some Matt Decord. He's ringing out some extraordinaire around here. Get that motherfucker. He's money. Get that motherfucker on your payroll now on your roster. That was my second reasoning. I did not want to disrespect the likes of the Matt the courts that are out there right now. Could I do it? Yeah, but I would have to do it in my own way. And we would have to come to terms with that because I am not, I'm not a professional ring announcer. I'm a jackass. that likes to have fun in the ring. I feel you there. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to talk about if we can, and I know we're one hour, six minutes. Do we have a little bit more time? With? Uh-uh. No time no. I got time. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to talk about your girlfriend, if we can, uh, if that's okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. You mentioned her earlier and bouncing ideas and her uh, giving her input. And I'm sure it's honest. I'm sure she doesn't just kiss your ass and be like, oh, baby, that's cute. Oh, no, that's awesome. Oh, that's her. I'm sure she gives you the honest feedback as a girlfriend would because <laughs> my love Cindy would tell me what is garbage or what is not. Uh, so... That is part of the support system that I want to kind of touch upon. And you know I speak on support system with every single talent that I speak with. Talk to us about what it means to you. Um, And I know you're a fan and you're not one of the boys. You're not uh, part of a promotion. And I know some of the boys might say, hey, you're one of the boys to a degree. You know what I'm saying? As they say to me. And I always say, no, I'm not. I'm a dude with a phone. You say the same thing. I'm just a sign guy who likes to have fun. Talk to us about that support wait, uh, that support system with your girlfriend, if you could, because without the support system, you don't have as much fun and it turns into something different, you know? So she's, I'll start off with, she's different than anyone I've ever met in the fact that she supports what I like, uh, is interested to do things with me, and she's just sucked up wrestling just like I kind of did too. Uh, we both have just been watching and going to wrestling since we got an invite to her brother's house for our WrestleMania. I think it was WrestleMania 34, so whatever year that was, that's what, when we really started to just dive into it. And since then, just going to as many shows as we can. She's always by my side, always cheesing at the signs. She loves it too. She's She's very shy, admittedly so. But she did something where this past year for my birthday, she more or less created a giant cameo video of friends, family, and a lot of my favorite indie talent. And I was I was bawling my eyes out. It was like I can't remember how many people, but I watched the video like three times that night, and it was one of the best gifts I could ever have. Just having all that feedback of because I, I I question myself. I'm like, do you think so and so saw the sign? Do you think so and so got it? Do you think right. that? And just all of these words and just not not people say hey happy birthday your girlfriend said hi like they took a minute to say what i meant to them and it's just Mm -hmm. i still get chills thinking about it like dick lane calling me a blessing and and various other people just saying how how much it means to them so having it come full circle to that that for me was a huge between that video and, frankly, this moment being here talking right now, I, I, it feels like I'm dreaming right now. It really does. 
from a wrestling fan's point of view to sit here and be talking with you right now in the short time that I've been in the game too, if I'm in the game, paying my ticket to go see some people <laughs> sweat and throw each other over turnbuckles and shit. And underwear. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. You know, the weirder the better because I'm just going to make a sign about it. <laughs> um, she, uh, she's extremely supportive and encouraging for anything I've ever wanted to do, which I'm still getting used to and we'll be together seven years uh, this December. Awesome. We actually spent our uh, anniversary at a Heavy Lies to Crown show, a Beyond Wrestling show. And that was the first moment where I got to kind of mess with AG. Um, oh, I okay. Had a had a bit of a rivalry with AG. I could touch on that for a moment. If, if you yeah, want. sure. Um, but I was at a show in Fairhaven, and I was getting, I think, Brandon Webb, the Devil's Reject, to sign a sign that I made. And I walked by AG, and I had wanted to see him work. I was really intrigued to see him. And he kind of has a scowl on, and I kind of just smiled my cheesy smile, and I said, if you're lucky, I'll make you a sign. <laughs> and he, without a second, he goes, I don't want a sign. I want your money. And I said, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you, can, you can thank AG for my, my fire that ignited inside me that day, because I was just like, this guy's fucked. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to ruin him. I am going to ruin him. And Is I this I is this post NXT or pre NXT? I believe pre. Yeah, pre. So okay. he went away. This is what happened. It was the Heavy Lies the Crown show at Beyond Wrestling. He was going against Josh Briggs for some sort of storyline that was like they were fighting over Ava Everett. I think the winner got Ava. So I had a sign because when he had talked to me at the fair, uh, sorry, the it was Fall River, Fall River show. When he said, I want your money. He tried to grab the sign that I had made for someone else when he was making his rounds. And I'm like, don't you ever do, don't do that. You know? So he, he pushed my buttons the wrong way. So I said, okay, he's a sign grabber. He just showed me that. <laughs> so at Heavy Lies the Crown, I brought two signs. One that said, retro sucks. And another sign that said, you still suck. Because I know he'd grab it and throw it. So I have the video. I've posted it before. I want to post it again. It's one of my favorite videos. It's probably one of my favorite moments I've had. But he, he's fighting Josh Briggs, and then I'm just in his face with the sign, retro socks, retro socks. And he, he picks it up, shows it to the audience, doesn't rip it, just throws it, you know, frisbee. And I'm like, yes. You just see me turn, and I whip out the you still suck sign. <laughs> and the camera, I can't explain to you. I'll send you the video after we talk. Okay. The camera whips to his face. He whips, looks at me. And the camera, the, the wide shot just cuts to us saying, you still suck. You still suck. <laughs> so that happened. Years, I think a couple of years went by. He went, he had his NXT or he did his um, 305 Live. He was on, he did his, he had his minute and he came back to the Indies. And it was, I was like, oh shit, he's back. <laughs> I get to say hi again. So it, it was actually a top rope show. It was my dad's 70th birthday. And it was, I, I believe it was, yeah, um, AG versus Teddy Goods. So it was a really good card. It was at the vault in New Bedford, which has since closed down, but I don't need to get into that. It was always a great show, great energy. So I'm waiting for AG to come back. And I had two signs because I knew he would probably rip one. So one said, Anthony Green, douchebag supreme. And the other <laughs> one said, like I said, douchebag. So he, he came out with Sydney Bacabella. They did their thing. Teddy grabbed my signs. Teddy's usually good about that. He'll bring the sign in the ring, and that's them to rip it up, crumple it, stomp on it, which they did. Um, but then they did like a halftime. You do your, you pay your ten bucks, get to take a picture with the talent in the ring. It was AG. So oh wow! It, it, it finally came full circle, and I just got to have like a couple minutes with him. But like I said, it was years later, and. He called. He called me out and remembered that moment at Beyond oh, wow. the Crown. And yeah. for me, I was like, like he remembered my moment. So yeah. for a long time, I held a grudge against Anthony Green, but now I can say he ain't too bad. Oh. And I'm happy to, and I'm happy to say that on stirring the pot with Don Kincaid because I wouldn't admit that anywhere else. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> AG, you're okay, but I'm still going to shit on you at every show I see you at. So, <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, the doubling up of signs. Uh, we're, we're similar, my man. Um, I'm going to just throw one at you real quick. Sure. KPW Alley Fights in East Haven, Connecticut. I, there's a dollar, uh, a dollar General over there. For whatever reason, I started buying a package of Chips Ahoy, Chewy, Chewy Chips Ahoy family uh, pack of cookies. Okay. And I would just ask people if they wanted a cookie. I would get some weird looks, which I expected, especially either from the children or the older uh, people, because who the fuck is just randomly asking to <laughs> hand out cookies at a wrestling event, right? Like, they're going to be drugged or some shit, right? Like, you, who the fuck is this creeper? But little by little, it started taking on a little something, and people were kind of expecting some cookies when PAPW Alley fights and... <laughs> I'll say I've seen you with these, the cookie. I'm like, where did this, what's the cookie thing? So you see, it, it comes full circle. I'm like, okay, I'm with it. So it always keeps me back in my mind. I'm like, okay, Don's all about cookies and I love these cookies. So just another reason I like you from Don King Cage. So carry on. And it's only at PAPW. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. It just happens to be only at PAPW. I love it. I love that. And I try to make new friends and keep the, and keep the friends I have. But not only. It's become a little tool, if you will, um, in the fandom between what I do and some of the talents that come up through that curtain. Some of them hate the piss out of my cookies. Except Q. Well, he hates them, but then he steals them and eats them. So he doesn't really hate my cookies. Yes. I get it. I get it. I get uh, but it. there was this one specific uh, PAPW Alley fight. Hunter Tarka is in the ring. And he comes rolling by this because I'm sitting here. The entrance would be to my right. He comes from the far side. Oh, shit. Ugh, I'm trashing the set. Um, it's a one man budget. Don't, it's a one man budget. Don't worry about it. Uh, he comes around from the wide, uh, the far side of the ring, comes walking by me. And in my hands is a package of cookies with two cookies in it and swipes it right out of my hands and takes it with him. And I start, and I know it's probably a family show, and I don't give a crap sometimes. What the fuck? He stole my fucking cookies. What the hell? Blah, 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 blah. And Q is over there yelling at me because I'm swearing up a storm, and he, you deserve your cookies stolen and all of this stuff. I look at my love, Cindy Hart, and I go, ha! Ah! I go underneath my seat, and I have me a brand new spanking shiny, brand new shiny oh, uh, package so of Chewy Chips Ahoy at the ready. And he got over to the other side where the entrance would be. And I stood right up and I held up my cookies and I yelled some dumb shit at him and made sure he knew that I had a brand new container of cookies. The crowd loved it. And Mr. Hunt the Tarka and Ref Q, or Q the Ref is his real name, but we all like to call him Ref Q because, you know, it, it. Uh, they hated it. And it made for one of my most favorite moments in the universe, uh, as you were describing with one AG and yourself. Yeah, one of those yeah. moments that will never leave my heart, my brain, my soul, is a picture that smooth lens photography, look them up boys and girls, smooth lens with a Z. All, all Smooth lens is one word, photography obviously is another. Great guy Caesar is, going to a lot of the promotions, taking some fine, fine photography at the events. There is one picture of this side where I'm way over on my side and Hunter Tarka is all pissed off and he's pointing at me and I'm holding up my cookies, pissing on him. Fantastic. Fan bleeping test. Uh, well, and I did it. Yeah, I uh, didn't mean to go on about my cookie uh, episode. Oh, but it really, really reminded me of what you went through with AG. Well, I can see a package of Chips Ahoy, but it doesn't say Chips Ahoy. It says Don Kincaid. So, uh, uh. See? See? It's that fucking easy, Don. It's that easy. Didn't, didn't take a second. Bang, bang! Pop, pop! <laughs> but Mind blown. The beauty of it. it didn't cost me a nickel. It didn't do anything. It's just an idea. A creative idea. And you're cheesing. We're having a good time. That's all that matters. 
Yes. Um, I know we spoke of Ref Q, not once, but now twice. Uh, I just want to put everything on the table. It's not Ref Q. I've been trying. Uh, Greg, I'm a one-man army. Hey, Let me Colin. tell you. What Colin. the hell? Uh, <laughs> I'm a one-man a one -man army out there. Boys and girls putting it on a table. And I know we, <laughs> we have plenty going on. Uh, it's Q the ref. Okay? Those three words, ref ends it. Q starts it. It's not ref Q. It's not whatever. There's been a couple instances of his name. I've been trying. Even though he wants to kick me in my fucking head. I've been trying. He did kick you in your fucking head, Don. I saw it. I uh, saw it at NWWE. But yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, and that, that's what it's leading into is that said uh, event. Um, it's cue the ref. I really want people to kind of get on board because he does have a page. Cue the ref. Uh, get over there. It's Q hyphen the hyphen ref. Uh, get over there. Check him out. Uh, he sures that guy. If, <laughs> uh, if anybody uh, shares the medias for the shows, it's Q the ref. That guy is, you know, as much as he hates me and I hate him right now, uh, he really is one of those talents that are on the rosters, on the cards, from promotion to promotion or what have you, always, always shares the media to try to get that name out there and push what he's doing, not just for himself, but for the other talents and for the promotion themselves so they all can have a good time, get us, a bunch of us, the fans at these shows, and, and you know, do it some more times. Uh, mm -hmm. So cue the ref. And yourself, you connect, as you stated earlier, at NWWE. You had some stuff on the table that the creative mind of one Greg Jones uh, Isaacson, uh, his wheels are never, not spinning, it seems, uh, always Thank creating. You know. It's a blessing uh, and a curse. My cross to bear, but <laughs> something. Uh, I, I, two things I would be remiss if I did not ask you about, and we never even got into your original wrestling fandom uh, before the indie. So we're going to speak on that to close out. Uh, but I really want to talk about why did you take my goddamn... Nobody wants to see this, Craig. I mean, for real. Uh, why did you take my face, blow it up to the size of the Empire State Building, and present it? I mean, I, I know there's multiple reasons why, uh, but uh, what brought you to the table to be like, you know what? Bam! That's what I'm doing for the sign for Ref Q to get under his hand. Well, when I think of Don Kincaid, I think of two faces. I think of, and I think of, and I think of, ah. Okay, so, okay, so that's where it starts. Less is more. So a simple image of someone's face does the job. No words are needed. It's just your mug. How do you think, sorry, Q, Lil Q coming out, seeing big old Donny K head. <laughs> How do you think he was going to do? He was cheesing so bad. I broke Q, and it was one of the best days of my life. Yeah. And I say, anytime I can get a sign signed, makes my day. Anytime oh, yeah. I can break you as a character, makes Thank my you. day. And yeah. believe it or not, if I get a sign rip, I'm cool with that. That right. means that, frankly, I made it to the ring in a way. <laughs> or, you know, I got to you. I got to you. I win. That's fine. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, I just thought I had to do. See, that was one of those moments where I, I can't just do one. You can't just have one. Can it just be the Don Kincaid? So when Q was there, and every any time I saw him, I said, "I saw Don. You see Don?" He goes, "What?" I'm like, yeah, he's here. Do you see him? He's no fucking Don Kincaid. I'm like, yeah, I saw him. He's here. You keep your eyes open, Q. I assure you. I assure you. See, and that, like, we were we were playing this up like a week before the show. I remember I was saying, like, oh, Don, you're going to be there, whether you like yep. it or not. <laughs> and so I did that for you, your big old noggin, because let's be honest, if anyone's going to recognize a face, it's the oh, Don Kincaid. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, 
it's funny, as easy as it is to rib on Q, I couldn't think of something, and then just little bald-headed Caillou popped in my head. <laughs> I just I just had to do it, but then as I was making it, I'm like, uh, that was one of those moments where I'm like, I might be in trouble. <laughs> that all worked out in the end. Uh, there's a picture that you posted of uh, my... Cue the ref looking at my face. It holds a dear place in my heart for from here into eternity, my friend. Um, I popped big, huge, gigantic. I couldn't wait to show anybody and everybody that I possibly could from where I first saw it in my living room with my family to going to see my Papa Kincaid uh, to showing my co-workers to showing uh, some of the boys over at different promotions. Have you seen what this fucking dude did with you? This is goddamn money. I wanted to show that to the world like it was my brand new grandson's picture. Uh, it, 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 it held a, uh, it holds a very dear piece of my heart, my man. And I cannot thank you enough uh, for what you're doing. And, and I know we have some distance between us as fans. But thinking of me and bringing that to the table to get under Q the ref skin, uh, just thank you so much, and I'm truly grateful for that. Uh, just because you were thinking of me and what I do within wrestling, I guess, and it kind of brought it over, and it really, really <laughs> Whoa! Uh, did it piss him off something good. Oh. All for you guys. I only roast the ones I love, as the saying goes. Good, uh, as Uncle Vinnie Mac would say, uh, such good shit. Uh, that is fantastic. Oh, and also, you did a very perfect, and I do mean absolutely spot on perfect impression of Q when you're like, Donkey Kate, you ain't no fucking Donkey Kate. That's it. He says that to anybody yeah. and everyone. I'm pretty darn good at impressions, but <laughs> you know, we'll share a beer one day and we'll, we'll shit on Q and it'll be a good time. Uh, whoo! Uh, that'll be a good time. Now I want to change the fucking title to shit on cue at the bar. What are you, what are you doing to me here? You're, you're oh, mixing yeah. me up. I only got one brain cell. I'm an idea guy. What can I say? To you? <laughs> uh, I know we're working on here an hour and a half, and I did not. I really, I thought it was going to be maybe an hour. You know, we'd have some fun, go for about an hour and be like, well, I think we ran out of uh, topics, but. I think we could probably go maybe three hours, four hours or so if we just, you know, uh, took a, maybe a piss. Yeah, many yeah. things I can talk all day about, but when exactly. you and I am I and we know who we know, it's just all day the six degrees and you won't be able to stop because every story leads to another <laughs> person, another promotion, yeah. another uh, sign, another memory. So. so oddly enough, boys and girls, uh, even though it's fan week, I think – uh, this is a fantastic one to have a return. One Greg Jones Isaacson. I think this he would be fantastic because there's no way, like he was just stating, there's no way we've pulled what we really, there's so much more that we could speak upon and talk more wrestling and talk more promotions and talk more talents that we are uh, have maybe uh, crossed paths with in different promotions. Uh, but before I do let you go, there's something that we have not spoken about at all. I went directly to creativity, and we went into the stuff that we have in common, being the talents and some of the storylines that have been going on and all of that good stuff. I don't, <laughs> uh, I don't know how long you've been a fan. I don't know how long you've been watching wrestling. I don't know who got you into it, because I like to uh, get those kind of things in my own way, because my papa, Papa Kincaid, he got me into wrestling and brought me to my first uh, event over in 1978. That shows my age, my friend. Uh, and uh, it's kind of been, you know, history from there, I guess. That's uh, eight years old, more at eight years old. So talk to us about your fandom before doing what you're doing. All right. I mean, as most people talk about, I was I'm a child of the late 80s, early 90s. So, I mean, Hogan... Macho man, you know, all that jazz. It was all big when I was a kid. It was just these images you'd have of the blurry, you know, you'd hear the ring and you'd hear the lights in the crowd. And it's just kind of like memories because, like, my grandma watched wrestling. My dad watched wrestling. My mom's not a big fan of wrestling. But uh, I remember 
if you watch like old wrestling shows and what I love is sometimes when the camera hits the lights and the lights trail, I can't, I can't describe it. It's just the way that it was, how they filmed it back in the day, but so nostalgic. Mm -hmm. But as a kid, just listening to those sounds definitely reminds me of growing up with wrestling around and it being like kind of implemented here and there. I, it wasn't a wrestling household. But And I never really went to wrestling. I went to wrestling once with my dad. My dad took me to, I want to say it was the South Shore Music Circus or the Cape Cod Melody Tent, one of those house show kind of things. There was a WWF show at the time. And I remember as a kid, I wanted to bring a sign or like something because that's what I saw on TV. Right. I, I didn't have anything handy. So one of my favorite wrestlers at the time was Mankind. So what did I do? I did Mr. Socko. Because that's what I had handy. <laughs> so probably the first thing I ever made and brought to a wrestling show was a Mr. Sacco. <laughs> and that's, for me, where it started. I've always been a wrestling fan. Um, I watched, you know, the Attitude Era and kind of fell off the bandwagon for, like, years with, like, the John Cena Ruthless Aggression Era and stuff like that. But I call it the dark ages because I've always been a wrestling fan. I've always loved wrestling anytime, any place. And I was working at a, a, a different bakery and I got an order one day for a cake with the ultimate warrior's face mask, like just the logo, you know, that, that image. And I'm like, Oh shit. And it just like, like it just it hit me like a tidal wave. <laughs> I started to do wrestling belt cakes. I started to do wrestling ring cakes. <laughs> yeah. And anytime wrestling came to town, we were about it. So it was like me forgetting how much I loved it. And then we went to Kathy's brother's house for WrestleMania 34. I did the cakes. I was the wrestling guy at work. Like I'd ask people, "Oh, did you watch Raw?" Like, yeah, great. We don't watch wrestling. Like, hey, <laughs> watch you don't. So it was so tough to kind of share that with people. And then, like I said, I just saw this flyer one day for wrestling five minutes down the street from where I work. So I'm like, we're going. And that was Top Rope Promotions in Brockton. And I saw Brandon Webb, Chuck O'Neill, Powerful Pat Garrett, uh, Nassau Mike McCarthy, one of my first favorites in the indies. I haven't seen him in a minute. Dying to see him work soon. Uh, it's been tough. Past couple shows, I've missed them. But a lot of great talent. And it just... I was hooked. Tommy Dreamer was there too, actually. So for me, it was like, oh my God, it's Tommy Dreamer, Tommy Dreamer. It's Tommy Dreamer now, so it is what it is. Showed up with his kendo sticks, you know. <laughs> but I made a Tommy effing Dreamer sign, and he gave me a wink. And that, that, was, that was it. I was hooked. And besides that one show, whatever it was that I told you that I made the mistake of not bringing it, not showing up with a sign or two, I've been bringing stuff to every single show I've been to. That being uh, said, when uh -huh. people ask me, how many signs have you made, Greg? It is genuinely 100% over 100 signs I've, I've made in the past five years. I've made over 100 signs. And that includes the ones that have been taken, ripped, this and that, over 100. <laughs> I don't know how I, oh, There goes waves and curls. Oh. All right. <laughs> uh, just like, you know, my set's falling apart. Your set's falling apart. Great minds, Don. Great minds. Uh, it, 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 too many similarities within this interview, my friend. <laughs> um, thank you so much for wanting to be part of Fan Week. Thank you so much for kicking us off uh, with great stories, with great creativity. Uh, we loved having you on SCP, and I can't thank you enough. Uh, Mr. Greg, I always want to, I always, I'm sorry, because your name is Greg Jones Isaacson. I always want, because there's a Greg Jones that I'm familiar with. I always want to go, Greg Jones, Isaacson. But that's only set aside for one Greg Jones. I'm back to high school. Thanks, Donna. So I, <laughs> so I have to pull it back when I say your name every time. I apologize. Hey. <laughs> it's so um, early, right? uh, but thank you so much for spending the time with us. And I cannot appreciate you taking some time out of your life to sit with us. Ha! To sit with us, the fans, my man. I mean, hey, come on. <laughs> there'd be nothing without us, right, Don? Yeah. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Uh, anytime. So down the road, we'll definitely have a return because there's so much more that we need to speak upon. Uh, but before I do let you go, 
I, I want people to be able to, if you're looking for such, because I know we like to spread the love. Uh, boys and girls, we get these deets out of Mr. Greg Isaac. <laughs> Greg Jones Isaac. Uh, once we get these details, I'm serious. Do yourself a favor. Look them up. And if you're around the Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area, you are bound to see someone familiar that he has made a sign for or probably is about to make a sign for in the near future. And you will not be disappointed. Jot his name down, look him up on face page and follow his stuff because it brings love, a tickle, uh, and, and it just shows his passion for wrestling. So uh, hit us with your Facebook, your Twitter, uh, and all of that stuff. Uh, if you got an OnlyFans, a Pornhub, uh, whatever you got, uh, hit us with how we can find to see your stuff. Well, I'm, I'm a Facebook whore, I call myself, so I just I'm on there all the time. You want to reach out to me on there if you're ever at a show and you just want to say hi feel free to come up and say hey we're always looking to just meet new people make new friends but i'm on facebook greg jones isaacson i'm on instagram star wars guy s-t-r-w-r-s-g-u-y um yeah i don't really tweet so but i'm i'm everywhere i'm mainly on facebook though so just feel free to reach out on facebook i i feel you i have the others but <laughs> i can only do one I mean, I tried to do three at a time, and my man, it's it's tough. too much for me. Yeah, it, it's oh, way, goodness, way, way too much for me. My dad's still <laughs> trying to get me on MySpace. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> uh, and I would absolutely be remiss if I did not have you repeat the details of uh, the bakery that you're doing all of this fine magic over at. Um, hit us with all of those details. So maybe even some of the talent might be like, you know what? I got some rib for one of my boys that I might want to use Mr. Greg Jones Isaacson for. So. so I've spent just over a year at Arts International Bakery in Raynham, Massachusetts. It's an incredible place to work. I'm standing by the taste. The taste speaks for itself. Any person that I come across that has a birthday, I say, come by, have a treat on me. I'm not just saying that. When I say that, I mean, come by. If you can't make it that day, come by the next day or the next weekend. I'm there Tuesday through Saturday, okay? Come on by, say, where's Greg? I'll come on out, we'll have a good time. I tell that to every single person. I don't care if you work in the ring. I don't care if you're out the ring. I don't care if you're Don Kincaid. I don't care if you're cue the ref. I don't care who you are. Come in, drop my name. Let's have something sweet. Let's talk about cake. And I got you. I got you, anything you need. I appreciate everything you just said, uh, except when cue the ref walks in there, make sure you, do you have a bitter uh, cupcake or something that will really, uh, I, I mean. On my <laughs> <laughs> Only reserved for the best. Uh, boys and girls, I uh, did not expect to spend one hour, 40 minutes with our friend, Greg. Yeah. We've never even met for F's sake in person and we Thank spent an know. hour. And 40 minutes, and we again, we could go for three or four hours just chit chatting and shooting the shit, if you will. Uh, what a fine time we had. I can't thank you enough with everything we've said, with all the information that's been given, with all the fun stuff that we went and talked with with uh, our friend Greg. It's been a fine, fine STP today on a Monday. Tui after Monday, but not with Greg Isaacson. We've had a fine time. Uh, with all of that said, my friends, this is Throwing the Pot with Don Kincaid and my very special guest, <laughs> one more time, Greg Jones Isaacson. Uh, sorry, I did it that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Don. Take it easy, brother. <laughs>